Hi everyone and welcome to the final lesson in chapter one of the IGCSE environmental management course. So far in this chapter we have covered lots of material. We firstly started to think about the formation of different rock types. We thought about how rocks and minerals can be found and extracted. We have thought about the different ecological and environmental impacts of rock extraction and in the previous lesson we thought about how we can try to manage these impacts. In this final lesson, we will consider the sustainable use of rocks and minerals, focusing on two key points. Firstly, we will try to define this concept of sustainability. And using this understanding, we will try to think about the different strategies for the sustainable use of rocks and minerals. Let's get started. Rocks and minerals are crucial resources that we use daily in our lives, and this can be seen all around us. Without mining, there would be no materials to build our schools and homes, no metallic elements to create the components in our phones and smart devices, or no coal-fired power stations to generate electricity which we can use to drive our hybrid cars and our e-bikes. As a resource, rocks and minerals do not have an endless supply. This means that they are finite resources. One day these resources will run out and therefore it's hard to see how these resources can meet the definition of sustainability. Sustainability means meeting today's social and economic needs whilst protecting the environment and resources for the future. Human society needs to use rocks and minerals with care. Controlling the use of materials to ensure an adequate supply which benefits people and society whilst maintaining economic growth and stability and protecting the environment at the same time. A sustainable solution to the issue of decreasing reserves of finite resources is often finding substitutes. In this case, looking for another more abundant material to replace scarcer materials. Let's look at an example. Copper is a rare but highly useful and sought after material. It can be used for, amongst other things, conducting electricity. This property makes copper very useful for transmitting information through the use of copper wires, a task which can be replaced by using a more common element, silica. Fiber optic cables are now used as a sustainable substitute for copper. This is because silica is much more commonly found around the world. We have two main options or strategies we can use if we want to achieve the sustainable use of rocks and minerals. Firstly, we can think about extraction. How can we mine these resources more efficiently? Let's look at a statistic. On average, Underground coal mines only remove about 55 to 70% of the coal present in a given reserve. This is mainly due to safety and economic concerns. In other words, the remaining 45 to 30% was too expensive to get. However, due to improvements in the efficiency of extraction, many mines wastes are now being processed a second time. This allows the valuable minerals within to be recovered. And this process can also be helped through chemical and biological treatments too, which can also further extract minerals within. These pictures shown here really demonstrate how far we have come in our mining practices over the centuries and decades. Improved technology and mining know-how is also leading to more sustainable extraction and processing. These high-tech and better performing machines that we have today are decreasing the waste and allowing mining companies to be more efficient in their mining operations. Finally, extraction can become more efficient through the use of computing and data analysis. More precise and detailed information about the location, size and quality of deposits can allow mining operators to better make choices about extraction. And this will in turn improve efficiency. However, challenges still remain when predicting geological conditions which are deep underground. 
Besides improving the efficiency of extraction, we can also think about the efficiency of how we use and recycle the mined material. Metal is almost 100% recyclable. This means our cars, steel cans, technological components and other manufactured goods can, for the most part, be recycled. Recovering and recycling existing metals is much more efficient and uses less energy than processing and producing new ores. And this also protects our val valuable reserves. Many countries and industrial sectors around the world have the potential to recycle far more materials in the future. There are also engineering solutions available too. For example, designing buildings and structures with less steel beams, whilst maintaining the same structural strength. Governments can also introduce policies and legislation to increase recycling. For example, requiring car manufacturers to take back their products once consumers are finished with them to recycle and reuse the parts. These kind of recycling and reuse laws can be found in European policy, like the WEEE, Waste Electrical and Electronic Equipment Directive. So let's take a look at some key vocabulary that we have covered within this class. Firstly, we have thought about what we mean when we use the concept of sustainability. And specifically for this class, thinking about the resources which are rocks and minerals. These resources are finite. That means that one day they will run out. They will not last forever. And because they are finite, if we want to use them sustainably, that means that we have to start looking for some substitutes, some more commonly found materials that we can use to replace rarer materials. We can also think about how we can more efficiently extract these materials from the earth through mining. And how we can make our processing more efficient as well, for example, through the use of better machinery. We can also use computing and data analysis to better locate, find, and think about the quality of the deposits that we're going to extract. Once we have gone through the extraction process and we have our materials or ores, then we need to think about how are we going to use these. Once they have been used, we can use recycling to use them once more. Again, improving the sustainability of the use of rocks and minerals. We can also look for some engineering solutions in our construction methods, for example. And governments can introduce laws and policies to put pressure on companies and um, different industries to recycle their products um, more easily and more often. So that's the end of our final lesson of chapter one, and hopefully we should now have a better understanding of how we can sustainably use rocks and minerals, thinking of some strategies for their sustainable use, and also beginning to evaluate these different strategies as well. Thank you for listening, everyone, and I hope to see you back for chapter two.